that's it we've checked out of Indonesia we snuck in an extra day because we had a few things to sort out but we've now left Belatung's just over there now the reason why I'm talking to camera is because if you remember a few weeks ago we discussed polling out uh, the head sail to run goose wing or wing on wing and uh, Steve of sailing vessel Gigi got in touch first of all via the comments and then he sent me an email and he said have you tried the stay sail trick we said, what is the stay sail trick? Never heard of this. Anyway, he sent a diagram. I'm not sure where the source is from, but essentially what you do is when you've pulled out your Yankee, as you see we have on the port side, if you have a stay sail, then you put that out and nice and tight on the opposite side of the wind, on the starboard side. This stabilizes the boat and it prevents the Yankee from flapping as much. Now it is, it was flapping quite a bit because we're in pretty light winds at the moment. So it's, taking a bit of effort to keep that sail filled. There we go, you can hear it now. Um, but thank you to Steve, we are now trying out the stay sail trick. So we'll keep an eye on this and we'll let you know how we get on with it. So long, Bellatung. Thank you very much for having us. That was the second time and you didn't disappoint. You're still lovely. We had a better look round this time, a little bit more. And uh, it looks to me like this is somewhere you could spend a month because there are so many places to anchor, so many different little coves and things. Yeah, it was great, it was lovely. But then that's been Indonesia for you. Two and a half years Esper's been here and it was time that we checked her out. We did all that and that was all fine. Thank you, Bella Tung, again for making it so easy. So we have to get away and we're on our way now. So officially we've left Indonesia, but unofficially we are still here. We're sailing through to get us up to the Malacca Strait now. Indonesia has been incredible. It's, you know, I feel quite sad to leave it because I wonder if I will come back. It's a place I, st I could probably stay for the rest of my life and never see it all. We said that about India. It's the same, tr the same is true of Indonesia. Fantastic place, fantastic people. So we followed Steve's advice and uh, after a lot of chopping and changing earlier on we finally found the wind. Um, it's interesting looking at the wind patterns around here with it basically set in to be southeasterly 15 knots but you should be surprised how much Bellatung creates uh, a big lee. So it took um, quite a few hours to get out of the lee of Bellatung even though Bellatung disappeared over the horizon. Uh, the wind speeds didn't really pick up until sort of early afternoon anyway. They've now settled and as you can see we've followed Steve's advice with the head sail, stay sail and the prevented main and we've got the prevented mizzen as well. Uh, one thing I didn't mention when we talked about um, running downwind and poling out, um, what you tend to find is, is that the wind is normally always a little bit biased just to port or to starboard. It's quite unusual to be running truly downwind all the time. Um, and in this instance, we were finding that the wind is very slightly biased to the starboard side. That's over my left shoulder here. Um, when that happens, then what you need to do is to set up the main as if you were setting this up normally. So the main is going over on the leeward side and it's the head sail that you pull out on the windward side. Um, this makes sense because, of course, if you need to reef that main, then um, you're not going to have a chance of jibing it or less chance of jibing it you see and the head sail can can handle having that uh, wind slightly off uh, the back end of the boat so to conclude well it seems as if the stay sail actually does indeed prevent rolling despite what it may seem on the camera what I found was that when I put the head sail, sorry the stay sail away uh, the boat was definitely rolling a lot more so it's really helping with that of course the other thing it does is that it helps funnel some of that wind so it comes through that gap between the head sail and the main sail, fills that gap and throws the wind onto the head sail. One of the advantages of a catch is having all these different sails which are relatively small to play with so we've got all kinds of ways to, put, to combine them and this works really really well and uh, I love it, I very, feel very secure and we've got a good, we've got good speed, as Jamie said. But yeah, overall, if you've got a catch, you've got a lot more ways of setting your sails. I'm struggling to keep you in frame. <laughs> <laughs> we are rolling a little. Yeah, we've got big waves. 
We've got big waves. So no, we haven't. No? No, they're not big waves. They're not even a metre. Well, they're, OK, maybe a metre, maybe a metre and a half. But, yeah. uh, of course, because we're running downwind, you never sail in a straight line. You're always <laughs> moving around. We sailed for the rest of the day, but towards late afternoon, the sky began to darken. Heavy clouds were gathering behind us, and then I saw the first water spout developing. As you're probably aware from recent news at the time of recording, water spouts can be extremely dangerous. To make matters worse, another spout appeared, and then another. We'd never seen anything like this before. There was little we could do about it, other than strap everything down, so we carried on hoping for the best, watching as water spouts appeared and dissipated alongside us. The sun's going down and uh, the wind keeps moving around at the back and we keep swapping the sails. And so we were out there just a moment ago with the pole and lo and behold, I saw a water spout developing and we put it away. So there's two that you may be able to see right now and this whole bit of cloud along here there's the one I saw and then this cloud follows all the way to horizon and it's a bit dark over there but there's, there's a fourth water spout over here on the right nice I think it's better we're better off with the pole away and we'll just watch these guys and see what's happening so first there was one and then there was two then three now four Oh my God. But as the sun went down, it turned out to be a decent night of benign weather. One of the first things you learn about night sailing is to reef down for the evening. Uh, this is a very sensible tip um, because quite often at night time, if the weather changes, uh, you can't really see what you're doing. And what you want to avoid is to be running around on deck in the dark, tripping over lines and what have you. So uh, always best to be a bit prudent. You may lose a knot or so of speed, but uh, it's worth just uh, maybe reefing in you know, a couple of those sails just in case the inevitable happens. Having sailed past Banker before, we knew there were many FADs in this area and they would be our biggest hazard to navigation. They're not charted and they appear out at sea for many miles, so we were glad when the sun came up. So last night at sunset we saw those water spouts. I think we counted four at one point, all in a long line. So, of course, being cautious and sensible, we decided to, well, not reef the sails, but we put the, uh, the head sail away, which was pulled out didn't bother putting it out again so we've had the main prevented on one side and the mizzen prevented on the other and we sailed like that all night and in fact that's what we've been doing on the second day is sailing with just the main and mizzen. Um, now sort of general rule is when you're running downwind you want to be using if you're going to use one sail it should be a head sail rather than your mainsail. This is because you've got more control over it uh, with the wind behind you but of course we have in mass furling and we can furl away our mainsail when we're running downwind, providing we pull the sail into the centre. It's actually easy to furl away. Um, so we've left it like that, and um, we've been getting five and a half, six knots. We could be going a lot faster if we put a head sail out as well, but actually we'd end up arriving at our next destination at night, which we don't want to do. So we've left it like that. It's been pretty comfortable. Um, yeah, so uh, there we go. I've, recommend it of course at the moment the weather is fairly consistent so it's not as if we've got any squalls approaching but that may of course change at night so we just have to be ready to um, pull that sail in and um, reef it as quickly as possible. Despite the hazards early on, we had a cracking sail up to Linga Island, the first of the group of islands that sit south of Singapore. We approached in the dark. With no moonlight, random fishing boats lit by strange pink glowing lights, commercial ships bearing down on us from behind, and a rolling fetch on our hind quarter, it was a technically challenging sail. This was compounded by an incredibly strong current that had us approaching the tip at a good 30 degrees off our course over ground. 
To round the corner at Linga, we had to stare directly at the promontory, its outline barely visible in the moonless night. But as soon as we'd tucked around the corner, the seas flattened and dawn broke. We're just coming into the third morning of the last of our trip up the Java Sea. So we're now approaching the islands of Linga, and this sort of marks the beginning of all of the islands south of Singapore. Uh, lots and lots of little islands and reefs, and you sort of have to work your way through them in order to get up to the top to eventually cross the Singapore Strait. It's been three days and two nights of constant sailing, and when I say sailing, I really mean sailing, no engine, sailing the whole way, always five knots plus dip down a little bit at the end to just under five but wow what an incredible sail we've had didn't use hardly any diesel i mean we are at the moment just uh, motoring to our anchorage but what an area everywhere we go in indonesia we go on about how beautiful and natural it is and once again nothing but nature and beauty around us it is supposed to have 17,000 islands here in Indonesia and uh, there's a whole load of them are right here. Yeah, interesting trip. First day wasn't particularly comfortable. Yesterday, however, was a superb, really quite pleasant downwind sail with just the main and the mizzen. Uh, it was really quite comfortable and enjoyed that. As I went to bed last night, Liz went to bed at six and I took the first watch and as the sun set, there was nothing, no boats, no fishing boats, literally nothing. And then over the next few hours, it gradually got more and more chaotic. And we ended up having a half hour conversation with a commercial tanker um, who I asked to uh, alter course because we were on collision. Anyway, that's another story. Needless to say, we're pretty tired this morning, so we're just running the engine now as we approach our anchorage just to make some water and charge the batteries. Coffee, of course, very important. Over my shoulder is the island of Linga, and not one hotel. Nobody comes here. Nobody's got the faintest idea about it. Only us yachts, us sailors. And look at the beach, it's just a magnificent stretches for miles sandy beach. All around are little islands, I wonder what the coral is like here. Could be some really good uh, swimming, certainly, um, snorkeling, maybe even diving. It could be an absolute dream. Mind you, just because something's beautiful doesn't mean to say that it has to be full of hotels and full of tourists, of course. Part of the charm about being a cruiser is, is coming to places like this and, um, and not being around tourists. Anyway, not only um, is it full of Beautiful islands, lots and lots of tiny little desert islands everywhere I look. There are what we call fishing platforms everywhere I look as well. So they're all rooted, they're all anchored to the floor. Uh, it's all quite shallow, the whole of the Java Sea going up towards Linga. It's between 20 and 30 metres depth. So they're able to anchor their fishing platforms pretty easily here. But there's lots here. Glad we came through to this area as, the, as dawn arose, so we can see them easily. But having said that, they are normally pretty well lit at night, so you can see them, but you know what it's like in the dark, everything seems closer, not so easy to get the perspective right. Yeah, so full of, full of the Obi Joy Falls this morning after quite a difficult night of night sailing, a bit more difficult than we had anticipated. But fine, we're fine this morning and looking forward to getting to our anchorage and having a good wash <laughs> and a lovely sleep. In the meantime, just look at gorgeous Linga and all these little islands all waiting to be explored all around here. That is the end of the Java Sea and good riddance to it. 238 nautical miles later, after the best sail of our trip so far, we made landfall at the remote but beautiful Pulau Kentar, where we said goodbye to the sometimes hostile Java Sea. From here on in, it will be plain sailing.